yes i am live now this is santu sahu and you are watching sahu's tutorial and here i am again with the mock test for the upcoming ms set a mock test on literary theory and this is part one so i think everything is okay uh, video quality and audio is okay here uh, so let's get into the video with these wonderful questions and before starting the session i would like to request all of you please to subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notifications so here is your first question on your screen the first question is that is uh, semiotics and the philosophy of language yeah uh, yeah everything is okay hmm yeah okay so the first question is that is uh, that is semiotics and the philosophy of language is a book by Umberto Eco, Robert Payne Warren, Rola Burtz, A. D. Wheelwright. So semiotics and the philosophy of language is a book on semiotics and that book was written by Umberto Eco. So here A is the right option. Umberto Eco has written semiotics and the philosophy of language. Moving ahead to the question number two. Understanding poetry. Uh, understanding poetry was written by Clint Brooks in collaboration with which writer? So this was understanding poetry was written in collaboration, and it was written by Clint Brooks and one of the other writer. Uh, you will have to identify that writer. Your options are Alan Tate, R. P. Blackmoor, John Crow Ransom, Robert Payne Warren. So understanding poetry was written by Clint Brooks. As well as uh, as written with Robert Payne Warren, that is D is the right of such. So Clean Brooks and Robert Payne Warren they had written understanding poetry. Moving at the question number three. Uh, now let, let's let's look at these explanations here. Understanding poetry was an American college textbook and poetry anthology by Clean Brooks and Robert Payne Warren, first published in the year 1938. And the book influenced new criticism and went through its fourth edition in 1976. So this book has influenced new criticism. Okay. The title of the Well Wrought Urn. The title of the Well Wrought Urn studies in the uh, structure of poetry has been taken from a metaphysical poet's poem. Who is that metaphysical poet? And the Well Wrought Urn. You know that Well Wrought Urn. Was published in the year nineteen forty seven, and here the author, the new critic, that is Clint Brooks, has written that work, the Well Wrought Urn, and Clint Brooks has mentioned uh, mentioned uh, uh, here a metaphysical poet, and the name of the poet is John Donne, and he has referred John Donne's canonization. For God say, hold your tongue and let me laugh. This is the opening line of John Donne's canonization. For God say, hold your tongue and let me laugh. So here, uh, John Donne's canonization is being referred by uh, by Clint Brooks in his book, uh, The Well Wrought Urn. The title has been taken from, and this work was published in the year 1947. Moving on to the, uh, let's look at the title contents. All an allusion. The fourth stanza of Dan's poem, the canonization, which is the primary subject for of the first chapter of the book. Moving at the question number four here, uh, philosophy of rhetoric. This is a new critic work. Philosophy of rhetoric is a work by uh, your options are I. E. Richards, J. E. Spinger, William Imsen, W. E. B. Du Bois. So here, <coughs> philosophy of rhetoric is a work by I. E. Richards. I. A. Richards has written uh, that is philosophy of rhetoric. Who developed a formalist approach to Ferdinand de Saussure's structuralist theories? And his best known work is Prolegomena to a Theory of Language, which was expanded in Resume of Theory of Language, a formal development of glossmatics, a formal development of glossmatics, and his scientific calculus of language. So uh, that here has this formalist approach uh, developed a formalist approach to social structuralist theories, uh, and it's based on Wagner's project by Natwa theory of language, and this work was written by your options as Louis uh, Louis Helmersloff, George Herbert Mead, Carnap, or Charles 
uh, Charles W. Morris. And so this work was uh, written by here Louis Helmesro. A is the right option. Here Louis Helmesro is the correct answer. Cultural poetics. This uh, phrase was coined by cultural poetics was coined by which writer? Raymond Williams, you know, Stephen Greenblatt, Ellen Showalter, or Paul Rico. So cultural poetics was coined by Stephen Greenblatt. So here B is the right option. Next question. In order to establish the idea of paradox, Clint Brooks, that is the new critic, has referred two poems of Wordsworth. So, to establish the idea of paradox, Clint Brooks has referred two poems of Wordsworth. One is composed upon Westminster Bridge, and you will have to answer the other one, the other poem that Wordsworth has mentioned. Your options are It is a beauteous evening, calm and free, immortality ode. Composed upon Westminster Bridge, Kubla Khan. So, composed upon Westminster is the one poem, and the other poem is here. Uh, it is a beauteous evening, calm and free. So, here the two poem that was referred by Clint Brooks in his uh, establishment of paradox was uh, where uh, composed upon Westminster Bridge, and the second one is it is a beauteous evening, calm and free. Okay. Who wrote the New Criticism, a lecture delivered at Columbia University, March 9, 1910? So, the New Criticism, a lecture delivered at Columbia University. John Coranjum, J. E. Springer, I. E. Richards, W. E. B. Du Bois. So, here uh, this was written by J. E. Springer, and in this lecture, for the first time, J. E. Springer has used the word new critic. The word new critic was first used by J. E. Springer, and it, go, it got its movement or name from the book of John Crowe Ranger, 1941, New Criticism. New critic. But the for the first time, the word was used by J. E. Springer in his the New Criticism, a lecture delivered at Columbia University, March 9, 1910. So, B is the right option over here. Moving ahead to the question number 23. Which English novelist received... Okay, yeah, this, this question was actually in the previous video. I have uh, discussed these questions and in the previous video, I have told that Paul Scott is the right option. But here, Paul Scott is incorrect one. Uh, I rectify that here. Winston Churchill is the right option and the question was that which English novelist received the Nobel Prize in 1953. In the previous video I have told that it was Paul Scott but Paul Scott is incorrect one here uh, the novelist uh, who got the Nobel Prize in the year 1953 is Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill. Winston, uh, Winston Churchill is the right option here. I rectify that. Okay. Moving on to the question number 9 here, A Theory of Semiotics is a book written by Ambato Eco, Paul, Paul Bozek, or Rola Bars, A.D. Willwright. A Theory of Semiotics is a book written by Ambato Eco. So here A is the right option. Ambato Eco has written The Theory of Semiotics. Moving on to the question number 10, uh, yeah. who pioneered the applications of Fadirandi Sassurian's semiotics to film theory. So, you have to identify the uh, uh, critics here who has pioneered the applications of Sassurian semiotics to film theory. Hmm. Applying syntagmatic analysis to scenes of films and grounding film semiotics in greater context. Your options are Christian Metz, Elisio Varnan, Ambato Eco, none of the above. So here, uh, the right option is Christian Metz, who has pioneered the applications of Sassurian semiotics to film theory. So here, A is the right option. Christian Metz is the right option over here. Moving to the question number 11. Uh, now look at these explanations here. Christian Metz, a French film theorist based known for pioneering the applications of Father and Sassur's theorist, semiology to film. And Mitch also brought aspects of Sigmund Freud and Jacques Lacan's psychoanalytic theories to film theory to explore the nature of the mass appeal of the cinema. And his books include Language and Cinema, 
English translations 1974 film language and the imaginary signifier these are the popular books written by Christian Mitch who has pioneered the film theory moving at the question number 11 who developed a structural version of semiotics named generative semiotics so which a uh, theorist here has developed generative semiotics trying to shift the focus of discipline from science to systems of significations your options are a g grimace that is algridas julian grimace thomas a sebok charles m morrison yuri lotman so generative semiotics is related to a g a j grimace so algridas julian grimace h uh, here the structure uh, developed generative semiotics a is the right option question number 12 uh, who amongst the following does not belong does not belong to the great tradition enunciated by fr levies fr levies has written the great tradition in the year 1948 and there were four writers who have been bestowed as the great traditional writer but you will have to identify which writer does not belong to that great tradition? Your options are Joseph Conrad, James Joyce, Jane Austen, George Eliot. Joseph Conrad was there. Joseph Conrad belongs to this category. Uh, Jane Austen was also there. George Eliot was also there. Whereas James Joyce does not belong to great tradition. Rather, it was Henry James. It was Henry. It was Henry James who belongs to this category. So Joseph Conrad, Henry James, Jane Austen and George Eliot, these four writers belong to Great Tradition. And this were Great Traditions, Great Traditions was written by F. R. Levis in the year 1948. Moving on to the question number 13, who founded Philosophical Pragmatism? Philo philosophical Pragmatism was founded by whom? Charles Sander Spears, Father and this Sassour, William D. Whitney or Jean Baudrillard. So here philosophical pragmatism was uh, founded by Charles Sanders Spears. A is the right option. The Prague School or the Prague Linguistic Circle started in the year 1924, 1925, 1988, 1926. The Prague School or uh, the Prague Linguistic Circle started in the year 1926. A over here. D is the right option over here. Who wrote the New Hesperides and other poems? The New Hesperides and other poems was written by a free writer. John Cloransom, J. E. Spingarn, I. A. Richards, W. E. V. Du Bois. So the New Hesperides and other poems, these were, uh, this was written by J. E. Spingarn, who for the first time used the word new critic. So here B is the right option. J. E. Spingarn has written the New Hesperides and other poems. Next question, which approach is associated with Prague School of Linguists prominent since 1930s? Which approach is associated uh, with the Prague School of Linguists prominent since 1930s? Functionalism, structuralism, modern grammar, formalism. So the right option here is functionalism. Functionalism uh, is the approach that is associated with the Prague School of Linguists prominent since 1930s. A is right option over here. Who argued that the notion of autonomy emerges from an undeniable fact of all language, the curious lag of accord between form and function? The notion of autonomy emerges from an undeniable fact of language, the curious lag of accord between form and function. It was told by William Croft, Sassoud, Chomsky, Edward Ladin. So this was argued by uh, William Croft. He is right option over here, William Croft. F. R. Levis, The Great Tradition, that was published in the year 1940, it was published in which year? 48, 49, 47, 53. So, The Great Tradition was published in the year 1948. And the, uh, the well-wrought urn by Clint Brooks was written by, uh, it was written in 1947. Uh, the Clint Brooks, The Well-wrought urn mm -hmm. was written in the year 1947, whereas F. R. Levis, The Great Tradition was written in 19, uh, published in 1948. A functional view of language and studies in functional syntax. These are two works are by whom? Andrew Martinet, Simon Dick, Michael Halliday, Edward Ladin. So functional view of language studies in functional syntax. These two works were written by Andrew Martinet. Andrew Martinet had written 
these two works, then A is the right absolute functional and free of language and studies in functional syntax. Uh, moving ahead to the next question. Who dedicated 1940 autobiography that is called Dusk of Dawn? Who dedicated 1940 autobiography that is called Dusk of Dawn to Spingarn's memory, calling him scholar and knight? Who dedicated his 1940 autobiography Dusk of Dawn to Spingarn's memory, calling him scholar and knight? So here your options are John Crow Ransom, J. E. Spingarn, I. A. Richards, or W. E. B. Du Bois. So Dusk of Dawn. Is, a, is an autobiography written by W. E. B. Du Bois. So here D is the right option over here. And he has uh, called J. E. Spingarn as scholar and knight. So D is the right option. Dusk of Dawn written by W. E. B. Du Bois. Next question. William Ibsen, seven types of ambiguity. That is, uh, William Ibsen is one of the new critics. And seven types of ambiguity was published in the year 1930. And seven types of ambiguity is a structuralist study of narrative, a piece of psychoanalytic criticism, a study of the media, or an analysis of poetic ambivalence. So here, seven types of ambiguity by William Ibsen, published in the year 1930, is an analysis of poetic ambivalence. So here, D is the right option over here. D is the right answer. Which new critic has written the well wrought urn published in the year 1947? Studies uh, in the structure of poetry. William Ibsen, I. A. Richards, Clint Brooks, William Carts, and Mundu Beardsley. So, the well wrought urn published in the year 1947 was written by Clint Brooks, the new critic. Clint Brooks has written the well wrought urn. And in this book, Heresy of Paraphrase, he has a coined term that is the phrase the heresy of paraphrase that is when you make a kind of error when you paraphrase or summarize a poem or any literary work that form and content are inseparable you cannot separate so the gist of the poem is destructed ruined when you uh, sorry wait a minute uh, when you summarize yes uh, when you summarize uh, anything so the well wrote on in this work uh, Clint Brooks has given the idea the heresy of paraphrase. Heresy, heresy means error. Okay. Moving on to question number 23. The author of some versions of pastoral, this work was written by which new critic? Imson J. Spingarn, I. Richards, Arthur B. Spingarn. So some versions of pastoral was also written by William Ibsen. William Ibsen has written some versions of pastoral. Next question, F.R. Levis and Q.D. Levis launched a critical journal devoted to the moral centrality of English studies. You have to identify that, name the journal, the English Historical Review, the Criterion, Scrutiny or Edinburgh Review. So here, uh, F.R. Levis and Q.D. Levis, has, they have launched Scrutiny. So here, 3 is the right option, Scrutiny is the right option over here. 25. In which year the well wrote on that is studies in the structure of poetry. This is the subtitle of the well wrote on that is studies in the structure of structure of poetry. Studies in the structure of poetry. This is the subtitle of the well wrote on, and this work was published in 1947, 14, and 4850. So it was published in the year 1947 by uh, Clint Brooks. Moving at the question number 26 here. In which book did Clint Brooks give the idea of heresy of paraphrase? I told earlier, language of paradox, understanding poetry, modern poetry and the tradition, the well wrote and studied in the structure of poetry. So heresy of paraphrase was given uh, in the book called the well wrote and studies in the structure of poetry. This is the subtitle D is the right, of, right option here. And heresy means, means error. So error of paraphrasing, when you paraphrase, when you summarize any work, then the actuality, the reality of the text is uh, destroyed, uh, the dramatic effect of the text is destroyed, the emotional effect is destroyed, ruined. So, you, so we make a kind of uh, error when you paraphrase or summarize any particular work. So this is this is given by Clint Brooks. Next. Who wrote meaning of meaning? You know that meaning of meaning was uh, written in collaboration. Uh, in, it was written in collaboration. So okay. Uh, first, try to understand the uh, first. Try to remember the first author here. I. A. Richards, J. E. Spingarn, and T. S. Eliot, W. E. Du Bois. So, meaning of meaning was written by I. A. Richards and C. K. Ogden. 
आईए रिचर्ड्स एंड सी के ऑगडेन सी के ऑगडेन हैज रिटन सी के ऑगडेन एंड आईए रिचर्ड्स दे हैव कोलैबोरेटिवली रिटन मीनिंग ऑफ मीनिंग लेट्स लुक एट दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन हियर द मीनिंग ऑफ मीनिंग एंड इट्स सेपरेटेड ईच अ स्टडी ऑफ द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ लैंग्वेज अपॉन थॉट एंड ऑफ द साइंस ऑफ सिंबोलिज्म पब्लिश्ड इन द ईयर 1923 एंड दिस वर्क्स वाज रिटन इन कोलैबोरेशन विद सी के ऑगडेन एंड आईए रिचर्ड्स structure sign and play in the discourse of uh, human science this was this magnum opus was written by jacques derrida was delivered in 1966 1956 1976 1964 so structure sign and play uh, in the discourse of the human science this work was uh, written in the year 1966 by jacques derrida so here a is the right option 1966 who wrote cold reach on imagination cold reach on imagination Richards, I Richards, J. Spingarn, Du Bois. So, Coleridge on imagination was written by I. Richards. I. Richards has written Coleridge on imagination. A is right option over here. I. Richards talked about four kinds of meaning, and in in practical criticism, a study in literary judgment. So, the subtitle of practical criticism is a study in literary judgment, and that was published in the year 1929. And there, in that book, he has mentioned four kind of meaning one uh, and you have to identify the word one your options are uh, sense sense feeling tone intention attention so the four kinds of meaning there were sense was there feeling was there tone was there intention was there so sense feeling tone and intentions these are four words there where attention was not there so attention is the right option you have to identify the word one so attention was not there so sense feeling tone intention was there in the book Practical criticism was studied in literary judgment by I. A. Richards, published in the year 1929. Elements of semiology. Now, elements of semiology is a work by Rulabard, Sassur, Derrida, Johnson. So, elements of semiology. This work is written by the post-structuralist and the structuralist and the post-structuralist Rulabard. The Rulabard has written elements of semiology. Okay. He has written the essay. The there is the date of the author. The famous. Hmm. Well check. Now moving at question number thirty-two, Prague Circle was disbanded. Prague Circle was disbanded in the year nineteen fifty-two, nineteen thirty-four, nineteen sixty-six, nineteen fifty-seven. Prague Circle was disbanded in the year nineteen fifty-two, nineteen fifty-two. That is A is the right option due to the nineteen forty-eight movement. That is here the circle act activities were interrupted by the German occupation of Czechoslovakia in nineteen thirty-nine, and the circle finally disbanded. In 1952, following the communist coup of 1948. Okay, so it was disbanded in the year 1952. Next question: In which book I. A. Richards gave the idea of two use of language? Two use of language. One is factual, and uh, that is scientific and emotive use of language. So here uh, you have to identify that book here. In which book I. A. Richards gave the idea of two uses of language? Four kinds of meaning was given in the in which work? That is practical criticism, a study in literary judgment, and here two uses of language. Your options are uh, practical criticism, a study in literary judgment, no. Pract uh, principle of literary criticism, meaning of meaning, philosophy of rhetoric, uh, and the right option is here principle of literary criticism. In this work, nineteen published in the nineteen twenty four. In this work, I just has given the idea of two uses of language. Scientific, factual use of language, and there is emotive use of language. And you know that meaning of meaning was written in collaboration with C. K. Ogden and I. Richards. Meaning of meaning. Okay. Moving on to the question thirty-four. Who saw post-structuralism was flawed? Was flawed due to reliance on Saussure's, uh, that is, Father and the Saussure's linguistic model, and which was seriously challenged by the nineteen fifties uh, and was soon abandoned by linguists. So here, who saw here? Let's look at here, and that is, yeah. So who saw post-structuralism was flawed due to reliance on Saussure's linguistic model, and which was seriously challenged by the 1950s and was soon abandoned by linguists. So your options are Norman Holland, Derrida, Rolabart, Stanley Fish. So here Norman Holland is the right option. Norman Holland uh, saw post-structuralism as flawed due to reliance on Saussure's linguistic model, which was seriously challenged by the 1950s and was soon abandoned by linguists. So A is the right option over here. And what is the subtitle of Practical Criticism published in the year 
this was published by I. Richards in, in, uh, in the 1929. Your options are study in literary judgment, study of literary judgment, study in literary criticism, a study of literary criticism. So, uh, the subtitle is a study in literary judgment. A is the right option. A study in literary judgment is the right option written by I. Rich, uh, I. Richards in the year 1929. You identify the French literary theorist and the semiotician. He often would critic piece of cultural material to expose how bourgeois society uses them to impose its value upon others. For instance, the portrayal of wine drinking, wine drinking in French society as a robust and healthy habit would be bourgeois ideal perception contradicted by certain realities. That is, that wine can be unhealthy and inebriating. He found semiotics useful in conducting these critics. Okay. Rola Barthes, Lacan, George Lakoff, or Freud. So, yeah, the right option is Rola Barthes. Rola Barthes is the right option. Moving on to the question number 37. With whom I. A. Richards wrote meaning of meaning? Your options are C.K. Ogden, Springer, and I. A. Richards, W. B. Lewis. So, it is easy, I told earlier. Uh, uh, so, yeah, C.K. Ogden is the right option. Next question Who defined the semiotic? Who defined the semiotic, which he would sometimes spell semiotic, semiotic, uh, uh, that is semiotic, as the quasi necessary, as the quasi necessary or formal doctrine of science, which abstracts what must be the characters of all science used by an intelligence capable of learning by experience. So, who has defined the semiotics as the quasi necessary or formal doctrine of science, and which abstracts? Uh, what must be the characters of all science used by an intelligence capable of learning by experience? Learning by experience. Charles Sanders Pierce, Padran de Sassur, Chomsky, A. J. Austin. So, yeah, the right option is Charles Sanders Pierce is the right option here. Moving at the question number 39. The preeminent evaluative criterion of F. R. Levis, the great tradition is. What was the evaluative criterion of A.F.R. Levis, the great tradition? Moral purpose, sublime subject matter, reader response to the truth to life. So, it was moral purpose. A is the right option. Hmm. Who first used the word new criticism? The word for the first time used by whom? John Cloranjan, J. E. Spingarn, I. Richards, Arthur B. Spingarn. So, here J. E. Spingarn has used for the first time the word and it got its the, the name, the movement got its name after the publications of the work published in 1941 by Joe by John Crow Ranjam. That is John Crow Ranjam. But the, for the first time it was used by J. E. Spingarn in his lecture in the Liberated Columbia University. Moving on to the question number 41, which of the following is not a critical study by William Mipson? Seven Types of Ambiguity published in 1930. This is a work by William Mipson. The Dyer Sand, Milton's God is a work by William Mipson. Some versions of Pastoral, these also, this, so these three, that is seven types of ambiguity. The uh, Milton's God, one, two, three. So these three were uh, written by uh, William Mipson, the new critic. Seven types of ambiguity, Milton's God, some versions of pastoral, these three were written by William Mipson. Whereas the Dyer's hand is a conditional basis and it was written by W. H. Auden. It was written by W. H. Auden. So the Dyer's hand is a work by W. H. Auden. So yeah, which is not critical study? Dyer's hand is not a critical study. Dyer's hand and other essays is a collection of essays and lectures by W. H. Auden. So it was written by Dyer's hand is a collection of essays written by W. H. Auden. Moving on to the question number 42. Now, structuralism, some features are there, uh, structuralism, post-structuralism, post-structuralist. So, structuralism is an intellectual movement in France in 1950s and in 1960s, studied underlying structures, uh, uh, structures in cultural products such as text and used analytical concepts from linguists, psychology and anthropology and other fields to interpret those structures. Is it true? Okay. Now, post-structuralism is rejecting the structural notion that dominant word in a pair is independent on its subservient counterpart. And post-structuralist approach argues that to understand an object, one, sorry, one must study uh, both the object itself and the systems of knowledge that produce the object. Only A is correct. Only B is correct. Only C is correct. So, as you know that uh, these three uh, options are right here. So, all are correct. Four is the right option here. All are correct. When was New Criticism by John Crow Ransom published? 
feeling tone intention okay next question fr levitz has disparaged dickens has denigrated dickens okay as because uh, dickens is lacking the mature standards and interest that can be found in the works of henry james so here uh, fr levitz is now praising henry james whereas he has disparaged dickens okay because dickens is lacking the mature standards and interest of henry james okay but one work of dickens was not denigrated was not criticized hmm. except that one okay hmm. so which is the work that was not criticized or denigrated hmm. or uh, denigrated by fr levis hard times red expectations david copperfield at tale of two cities so the work that was not denigrated by fr levis uh, by of dickens was hard times so hard times he has praised hard times hmm. Except, uh, except the hard times. Okay, he has uh, he has criticized all the other works of Dickens. So it was Ephraim Levitz. Now move to question number forty-six here. Who first coined the term new criticism? The term uh, new criticism was coined by John Crow Ransom. So A is the right option here. Moving on to the question number forty-seven. When was practical criticism published? Practical criticism was published in the year nineteen twenty-nine. Practical criticism was published in the year nineteen twenty-nine. Next question: Who first used the term practical criticism? Practical criticism was for the first time used by I. A. Richards. I. A. Richards for the first time has used practical criticism. A is right option over here. The term intentional fallacy is used by William Emerson. Not of Fry, Wilk and Warren, William Wimsey and Munro Beardsley. So intentional fallacy was for the first time used by William Wimsey and Munro Beardsley. So here D is the right option over here. The error of interpreting a literary work by referring to evidence outside of itself, such as the design and the purpose of the author, is called affective fallacy, intentional fallacy, synecdochic fallacy, or So what 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 does the statement say? The error of interpreting a literary work by referring to evidence outside of itself, such as the design and the purpose of the author. Purpose of the author. So this is intentional fallacy here. Two is the right option. Intentional fallacy is the right option. Moving on to the question number fifty-one. William Emerson's Seven Types of Ambiguity was published in nineteen thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, twenty-nine. So William Emerson's Seven Types of Ambiguity was published in the year nineteen thirty. So A is the right option here. I think this is the last question here. The great English novelists are Jane Austen, George Eliot, Henry James, and Joseph Conrad. Which of the following critical texts begin with the above assertion? Walter Allen, the English novel known. Terry Gilton, the English novel, no. F. R. Lewis, the Great Tradition, Ian Watt, Rise of the Novel. So F. R. Lewis, the Great Tradition, published in the year nineteen forty-eight, and in this work, okay, this uh, this opening, this this was the opening line of that work. So, so these were fifty-two questions I have discussed. Please do subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notifications and to update and stay tuned with my channel. Thank you once again for watching the video. And if you want me to make any video on any particular topic you can write it down you can suggest me in the comment box i will definitely try to make video on that topic thank you